Psalm 114. It says, when Israel went forth from Egypt, the house of Jacob from a people of a strange language. We have a psalm here that is going to show us the power of God. God was speaking to me and he says, tell my people to not doubt me. God is mighty to save. And we are going to see how powerful God is. You see, God is not prideful. He is a humble. Many times, he can move things quick, but he does not do it because he is patient. And he doesn't want us to ever think that he is weak. He is very powerful. So this song is going to tell us what happened when they moved from the land of Egypt. The Bible says, the sea locked and fled, the Jordan turned back, the mountains skipped like rams, <laughs> the hills like lambs. Do you hear that? When Israel was coming from Egypt and when they get to Mount Sinai, actually before they get there, God began to do his show. The sea obeyed him. The Jordan turned back. It made a U-turn. That's how powerful God is. The mountains began to move. Actually, if you go to Exodus 19 and verse 18, I want you to go there so you know I'm not making this up. <laughs> now Mount Sinai was all in smoke because the Lord descended upon it in a fire. When God come physically in a place, these things will happen. We have not seen him move physically yet. We have not even seen him moving his hand physically. Imagine what will happen when he comes down. And he can and he will. He is coming down in this last hour. And it's a smoke ascended like the smoke of a furnace. And the whole mountain Quacked violently. A mountain moved and shook violently. How much more things will move when God shows up in your life? Your problems are not bigger than a mountain that has been there for years. The Lord is saying, tell my people to really believe me. So, when the mountain skipped and the hills began to move, in verse 5 of Psalm 114, it says, What else you all see that you flee? Oh, Jordan, that you turn back. Oh, mountains, that you skip like rams. Oh, hills like lambs. Tremble, O oh earth, before the Lord, my Father, I pray that we, your children, will have understanding of your power. Let your power be filled. Let your children feel your power. I command every doubt, every spirit of unbelief, to leave us, your people, in the name of Jesus. We've got to believe if we are going to see the miracles. Do you remember that one place in the Bible? Jesus could not do any miracles because of the unbelief. So this morning, we make up our mind to believe. And only believe. That's all he asks us. My people.
people believe me you're gonna see miracle signs and wonder we we've got to destroy the strong words of doubts when God say it like children we must believe it and we must get hold of God's promise and stand upon his promise and believe it we are going again to talk about demon free zone God has begun to move to clean his house revival is coming but it's beginning with his house first which is his church his people and he's training us his army to move in miracle signs and wonders to get rid of the demons that have been invading and infesting his people we will do this whole week uh we will study the difference based on the book of mark yesterday we did mark chapter one and can you believe that even talking 40 minutes we did not finish the whole chapter one because there are many more miracles of deliverance that jesus did and we are drawing the lesson from this miracle he wants me to teach you how to do deliverance using the scripture mark chapter one in verse 29 we see that after the deliverance in the synagogue, Jesus and the disciples, they went to Peter, to Peter's home. The mother was sick and Jesus just healed her instantly. You cannot find a place in the Bible when people came asking for healing and they did not receive it. You cannot find where people were demon possessed and Jesus failed to set them free. So it's God's will that every person be free. Now, if there are people that you know, and I'm sure you do, your siblings, maybe your parents, maybe your spouse, maybe your co-worker, the people that God will bring in your path. If you see someone who is not free, it is your job to pray for them for freedom and to ask God that he uses you. God might use somebody else. God will do it his own way, but it's our job to pray and to contend for their freedom. I know God will answer that prayer. It's in the book. Do you remember the promise in the book of John? It says that if we ask anything according to his will, he will answer us. It's God's will that all people be demon free. It's God's will that we live in a demon free zone. The devil is God's enemy and we are God's friend. And we must join with Christ together with heaven to get rid of demons. Not just cast them out, but to push them back to where they belong. Hallelujah. And we are going to do that in the name of Jesus. In the book of Mark, there are many miracles that Jesus did about healing. But right now, this whole week, we will focus on the deliverance. There are some sickness that are caused by demons, most of sickness. But there are also things that can happen to us because we are not careful. And even when those things happen, always the demons take advantage and they come in. After Jesus raising uh, the mother in the law of Peter, evening came and after the son had said, they began bringing to him all who were ill and those who were demon possessed. Anything like that has never been seen before. Where somebody get the demons cast out of their lives. 
So they brought these people to Jesus. Go to Jesus for everyone who is in need of deliverance. Go there in prayer. But remember, Jesus lives in you. He gave the disciple the power to heal all manner of diseases and to heal all kind of sickness. We must contend for healing. We must contend for freedom for all manner of sickness and disease. The whole city had gathered at the door and Jesus healed many people who were ill with various diseases. Right now, as we are reading this, the Lord Jesus is showing me that he is delivering you. What you can do right now as I preach, go on your knees and be repenting for your sins and for the sins of a generation. And you, as I preach, if Jesus is doing the deliverance, this is how you will know. You will begin to feel the stirring up. You might even feel gagging, you know, or yawning, or the tears, or you might even pass gas. When that happens, do not try to hold yourself. If you feel like you need to open your mouth and let something go, please do it. It's better to get those demons out rather than to keep them inside of us. Hallelujah. We will not be ashamed to be delivered. We will not be ashamed to let them out, but we should be ashamed to keep them in. Hallelujah. He healed many who were ill with various diseases, and he cursed out many demons, many demons, and he was not permitting the demons to speak because they knew who he was. <laughs> the demons knew who Jesus was. Many times, as you can see, we are going to see that in one of the chapter, they will scream and they say, we know who you are, the Holy One of God. We know who you are, the Son of God. They know him. They used to be in the glory of heaven with him. They miss it so much. They know, they know my friend. And so when Jesus casted them out, he would not let them speak. He was not permitting the demons to speak. Look at the word permit here. This is to tell you, God's people, when you are doing deliverance, you are in a church. The demons are under your feet. It's a great thing, but we are not going to be grateful. So I want to remind you, you do not let the demons talk to you. You do not let the demons tell you what, no, no, no. They obey you. They are under your feet. You are the one who will permit who speak and who does not speak. In verse 35, we will just look at that very quick. This is where Jesus got the power. He will go and spend the night in a prayer. He will go sometime, uh, wake up very early, and he will go and spend time with about that. This morning, the Lord woke me up very early. I spent time praying for this show, praying for many different things and worshiping Jesus. That's where we get our strength, our power. We must prepare ourselves to be a temple of God so that we can be Jesus to the world. See, Jesus is in heaven, but he's also in you. Do not wait for Jesus to come and set free your neighbor. You are the one to do it because he gave you the power and authority, my friend. 
In the morning, he goes and he prays. The disciple came and they got him in verse 39 of chapter 1. Jesus went into the synagogues throughout all Galilee, preaching and casting out the demons. He began cleansing, setting the people free, but in the house of God. In the beginning of the ministry, that's what the Lord had me and the church do. He had us go through deliverance first. After the leadership finished deliverance, we did deliverance on every member. And then, right now, I have a team. Now on here, but we have a team, many different places in the United States, in Thailand, in the Philippines, in many other places. And they are all being trained to do deliverance. Some of them already have been trained. They know how to do this. Because revival must begin in the house of God. How is the world going to want to change when we do not represent Jesus properly? We've got to get rid of our own demons before we deliver other people. We cannot give what we don't have. And let me tell you, when I met the Lord Jesus, I was shocked because he is not who I thought he was. Oh, he is Jesus who is out of the box, humorous, very humble. And I found him to be fun. Serving God is a fun. That's why sometimes when we worship, we do many funny things. We smile, we laugh. During our fellowship time after prayer, we take breaks and we do many different things because joy is supposed to be in the house of God. Come on, Pastor, we've got uh, to, uh, to hang loose. We've got to really... Uh, let go of the pride. Let go of being this person that people have to respect and fear. No, I hope that when you see me, you see a person who is down to earth. Very simple, very simple, very uh, humorous. I hope I was a very strict pastor. The Lord is still teaching me how to have fun. So Jesus went in the synagogue and look what he did. Preaching and casting out demons. The church must preach. And as the word is being preached, people must be free. Hallelujah. Okay, so we will continue to uh, read. If you read in Mark chapter 2, you see a lot of healing taking place. It's a wonderful thing. But we are going to skip and go to where we see people being delivered from demons. Now, let me tell you, the Lord has given us enough power. Right now, what I am praying for is that somehow the government and all these health institutions, they let us go into those mental hospitals because... We are going to empty them. There is not a single person who is in a mental hospital that you and I cannot set free. And I tell you what, a day is coming when this will happen. In Matthew chapter 3, there is another hearing that is taking place in the synagogue. God is cleansing his house. But first of all, in his own house, in Mark chapter 3, verse 11, it talks about that whenever the unclean spirit saw Jesus, they would fall down before him and he shout, you are the son of God. Remember what I told you? They know him. They know you. They 
know that you are saved. They know whether you take salvation lightly. They know whether you are playing games or not. They know. So, Jesus, in verse 12, it says, He earnestly warned them not to tell who he was. In Matthew chapter 16, and verse 16, you remember when Jesus asked who he was? Peter answered by the revelation of God Almighty. He said, you were the Christ, the Son of the living God. Do you see how the demons give the same answer? There is information that the demons know and we do not know. Because they've been there all along. But of course, we are now going to the demons to get information. We will get our information from the word of God. We will get information from the Holy Spirit. Please do not go consult a medium regarding who you are going to marry. Do not go find out anything from a psychic, fortune teller, from a, uh, witches. Do not do that. Because what they are doing, they are opening the doors and they are sending more demons into the people. There is information. This is what the Lord told me. There is information that he does not want people to know at times because if they know prematurely, people will not be able to endure. It's too much. For example, whenever God gives you a promise, like when he gave the promise to Joseph, you are going to be somebody who is great. The Lord could not tell him that he will go through the pity first. If the Lord was to tell us everything that we will go through to get to the promise, many people will back off. Many people will have even a heart attack. So the Lord gave you the promise. I'm taking you to a land of milk and honey. But he does not tell you the details. He tells you the details as you go on your knees and pray. And the Lord spoke to me. There is information that has been lost. For example, when the Lord visit people and take them to heaven, many times they don't tell you they also go to hell. And sometimes he allows people to be tormented. That is information that has been hidden. But the Lord is said, I am bringing this information back because of the end time. Very soon, the mysteries of God are going to be revealed, my friend. Now, the Lord also told me, thirdly, there is information that has been lost. The devil doesn't want people to know about deliverance. He doesn't want them to be free. He wants people to talk about grace and grace and grace. But God is not like that. God will tell you about grace. God will tell you about his love. But God will tell you also about judgment. He will tell you about sin. He will tell you about heaven. But he also tells you about hell. And so the Lord earnestly warned them not to tell who he was. Oh, my friend. The demons... Can you know something that is the truth? But as you go a little bit further, in Mark 3, 21 through 30, you can see that there are people who are supposed to know, but they don't know. For example, in verse 21 and 22, it talks about how the scribe came down. Usually the scribe and the Pharisees, they said, he is possessed by Beelzebub. He casts out the demons by the ruler of the demons. Wait a minute. The demons know that Jesus is the son of God. They know that Jesus is God. But the people in the house of God, the Pharisees, 
the priest, the ones who the information actually was coming to, they deny him. They believe lies. We have to be careful even in the churches today that we always know the truth. We believe the truth. We have to search scripture. We have to dig. We have to ask God to give us the revelation of Jesus Christ because there are many, many people who are in here because they took Jesus like their body. They took him as just a friend. They can do anything they want. He's going to understand. We have to know him correctly and we have to understand the scripture correctly. Isn't it sad that the demons will know some right information that God's people don't know? I do believe that we need to really stand up and contend for all this knowledge that we are supposed to have that we do not have. Why don't you have that knowledge? Why don't we have it? The Bible says, seek you will find. But when you seek, seek in the scripture. Do not go to the medium. Do not go to the psychic. Do not go to this website and that website. Because sometimes there is information that is forbidden for us to know yet. So, we see that they start calling Jesus someone who is possessed by the devil. When you are in deliverance ministry, the enemy is going to raise up people to come against you. They will persecute you like there is no tomorrow. But my friend, do not go back. Do not be afraid. Do not give up because of persecution. You are doing this for Jesus. We are doing this for Jesus. And they said all kinds of lies that he cast out the demons by the ruler of the demons. Let me tell you the truth. If you go to a church that casts out demons in the name of Jesus Christ, pray for that church and never, never come against that church because no one can cast the demons in the name of Jesus and they live if they don't have the power of God. There are many times that people go cast out demons but they don't move, they don't shriek. You remember yesterday I told you about the manifestation of demons? It's very important that before you cast them they shake, they move. How do you make them move? How do you make the demons manifest? You speak the word of God with a power and with authority. And sometimes they are very good at hiding. So I'm going to give you other weapons that you will use to make them manifest. Okay. In this church, the Lord has given us the fire. And each one of us here, we have the fire of God in us. When people come to our church, we impart the fire. This fire is very strong. Can you imagine when you pray every single day, at least four or five, six hours? The Lord gives you the power and you're living holy for him. He will give you the fire. This is what we do. You bring your hands like this. So I want you to do this right now. And then I put my hands on the top of your hands. I don't touch you. For the reason I will explain it later. And I give you fire like this. I can pray in tongues. I can be quiet. The fire begins to come. Right now, I would like you to have your hands like this and I'm going to give you the fire. Holy Lord Jesus, I pray and I ask you 
to release your fire over your people. I pray for the impartation of the blessing, holy fire of God, my friend. Close your eyes. If you can, go on your knees, but keep your hands up like this. Put your hands together. And what Jesus is doing right now, he has put his hand on top of my hands. So it's basically Jesus' hands imparting the fire, the power into you. I release the fire of God, the blazing holy fire, strong and raging fire of God into your people. Release your fire, oh God. From head to toes, release your fire. I command sickness and disease to leave you right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Someone on the right shoulder, the Lord is healing you. Receive the dynamic healing power of God. Your neck, your neck. Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you. I give you praise. The Lord is giving you a massage on your neck. He is healing you. Straighten up. Give him the glory. Thank him. He is a good father. And he gives that which is good. I release the healing power of God into you from my head to toes. Your back is being touched by God Almighty. Straighten up as he touches you. Feel his heat, feel his power. Father, I ask you that you heal the incurable diseases. My father, since we are talking about these demons, I ask that you heal every sickness, every disease, that has been caused by demons in your body. I declare that your body from today forward, it will be a temple of the Holy Spirit. My Father, remember the price you paid. Remember each name of those who are watching this. Remember each one of them. And I ask you to cause the sickness caused by demons to depart in the name of Jesus Christ. I rebuke you, Satan, in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord rebuke you. The Lord rebuke every spirit of infirmity. The Lord rebuke every sickness and disease. The Lord destroy every works of the devil in your body. My friend, you are God's own possession. You belong to God. You belong to God most high. And I ask the Father to make you whole from head to toes. To make you whole body, mind, and spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. Stand up. Let's worship him. Let's give him the glory. He is worthy. Lift up your hands. Oh, God's people. The Lord is moving upon us, upon you. He is empowering us to endure, to go on, to carry on the calling. You will not give up. The devil will give up. 
but not us, not his people. The Lord is giving you the strength of David. You will fight mighty battles. You will run and not be weary. You see, God does not give up. The Holy Spirit does not give up. And I pray for the impartation into you and into your spirit to be like him, to not give up. His power is real. His power is raising you up to be like David. You will slay giants. Now with chariots and horses or physical weapons, you will slay giants with the power of God. You remember in the beginning, Psalm 114, how the mountain moved when God came down. Guess what? Day by day, he is intensifying his presence in you. And very soon, we, the army of the Lord, the army of Jesus Christ, we are going to invade. We will stand and invade the earth for the glory of God. The power that is coming the power that will be given unto you who are faithful, who will endure to the end. It's a power that the earth has never seen. The power the earth has no idea of. Prepare yourself for him. He is still delivering many of you. He is causing the enemy to flee. Do not be afraid of witchcraft. Just see to it that you be Jesus. That you be his. Greater is God in you than the devil in this world. Fight a good fight of faith. Do not give up. Do not give in. The Lord will stand with you even when persecution comes he wants you to endure it's not possible to work with God and not make enemies it will be bad if the devil is happy with what you are doing but he's not happy that's why the tumor, the shaking the persecution persevere we are going to reach our goal. We are going to reach our destiny. We will be free. And we will set God's people, not only in the United States of America, but all over the world. People are going to be free from curses and witchcraft and demonic power, sickness and disease. And they will all give glory to God. My friend, I must stop here today. I love you. Tomorrow, do not miss. We will talk again about demon-free zone. Thank you.